Hey all, so today I'm going to be doing a non-conclusive basic tutorial for AutoCAD, specifically for use in 2D interior and architectural drawings. So this is what I personally think are the most used commands and tools for interior design and architectural drawings, and is by no means a conclusive list of things you should know in AutoCAD. In this video, I'm going to cover navigation, basic drawing tools, layers, scaling your drawings, and line weights. So before we get started, I would strongly recommend you get a nice to decent mouse, something like this, and make sure you just have a actual physical scroll wheel on top because it makes navigating the program a lot easier. As well, over long hours of CADing, you're gonna have less wrist fatigue. All right, so I'm just gonna start this tutorial by opening up one of my old floor plans. I'm looking at right now, this is model space. This is where you're gonna be doing most of your drawing in the program. Uh, over here we have what's called paper space. So this is where you're gonna be laying out and scaling your drawings properly. So in model space, you're gonna be drawing everything one to one and make sure just your units are correct before you start. So I wanna type in my units. Um, I have this set to architectural and feet, so I'm in an imperial unit system. Uh, if I want to go to decimal, I can also do feet in decimals as well, or I can switch over to millimeters for metric. Now it's really important that you have all your units correct before you start drawing because otherwise you're going to be stuck with uh, having to scale it up or down depending on what units you're drawing from. So as you might have noticed, I've been panning just pretty easily with the mouse. Um, I'm actually just middle clicking my scroll wheel and that allows me to pan across my model. I'm going to look at selecting and editing objects. So you can select an object by left clicking and then it'll create a rectangular box for you to group your selection. Or you can also left click and hold and then it'll give you more of an organic selection box just in case you might want to select something that's not so rectilinear. So um, another great navigation tool I would like to introduce is the command box. If you notice that I haven't actually been looking towards any of my toolbars to select any of my tools, and I've actually been just typing in. So if I want a line, I type in line. These are just some of the commands that you're gonna have to remember eventually. It might take a little bit of time to remember them, but so here I have my line. You can also repeat a command that you previously selected by pressing enter. There I have the line tool selected again and I can do whatever. Uh, I also want to introduce the topic of your smart guides, I would call them. Um, that would be your grid, your snap, your orthographic mode, and your object snaps. So I'll just briefly talk about each one of those. Your grid and snap is, well, the grid and what your cursor snaps to. So if I type in grid and I'm looking to turn it off, I can turn it off here, or I can also change the grid spacing. And then now if I zoom in, look, the, the spacing is now down to two inches. Uh, you can do this a similar thing with snap, just type in the command snap, on or off, and you can adjust the spacing. Now, OrthoLock is a tool that is designed to help you pull elevations and uh, draw much easier with the rectilinear forms. It's going to be a bit more difficult to do some funky angle like this, but uh, you would have to turn that off to draw something like this. And then it'll lock it in a to the X and Y axis on your drawing. Another really important guide is your object snap, so uh, you can edit your settings in the function O snap, like O snap. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to use these specific anchor points on the lines as a vertice you can connect to. So say I wanted, say this was a stray for some reason, and I wanted to connect it exactly to the end of this point. So I can have this piece and I select the vertice, pull it all the way. This is the perpendicular lock. 
and it snaps to the perpendicular, or I can snap to the end point of this line, which is what I want. Uh, now I'm going to cover just some of the basic drawing tools. Um, as you saw, I covered like I pulled up a line before. And with this, I just want to show you the difference between a polyline and a line. So that's a line, and I'm going to draw a polyline. The biggest difference I would say is that um, after you draw it, these, li these lines are connected. So these polylines are connected and the lines are not. So these are actually individual pieces that you can move apart from one another. Um, beyond that, if you accidentally do use the line tool and you want to convert it into a polyline, you can type in the command pedit and I'm enter and I can select multiple lines. So I press enter. So uh, it's gonna convert any of these lines into a polyline, yes. So next I'm gonna be talking about some dimensions. So uh, the first one I'm gonna be talking about is an aligned dimension. So dim aligned. And then I'm gonna select, what an aligned dimension is, it allows you to dimension uh, angle. So that's going to be different from a linear dimension. So dim lin is a command. It's actually a different. Di this dimension line really only lets you uh, dimension things on the y and x axis. If you try to use a linear dimension on an angled surface, it's actually just going to lock to your x or y axis, and you're not actually going to be getting the full length of the wall. So uh, I also want to introduce another dimension tool is called uh, continuous dimension. So dim continue and I can select which uh, dimension I would like to continue from. So maybe I want to continue from this and this will actually allow me to get pull another dimension. So say I wanted to continue a dimension line across so I can get the varying uh, partitions of this facade then I can do so like that. Just makes dimensioning in your drawing a whole lot easier. Now, while we're in the topic of dimensioning, um, I'm gonna quickly just go into uh, where you actually adjust the size of uh, specific dimension features. So you type in the command dim style, which is represents dim style. Press enter, modify, um, so there's a whole bunch of different sections. I'm not going to get into this too much, but I'll just go over the important basics. Um, make sure your primary units are correct. Uh, so these should be matching uh, your drawing units to not confuse yourself. It'll, it'll show you the precision at which uh, your dimensions are going to be shown. Now, also a lot of times your dimension might be too big or too small in your drawing. So you want to look at the text. And then you can always adjust the text height. So maybe that's a bit too tall. Maybe I want it to be one foot. And that's just going to relate back to your drawing. Uh, another thing you can change is symbols and arrows. You can change your arrows to an architectural tick if you want. Press OK. There's a whole bunch of features you can just take a look when you have the time. So now I'm just going to go over a bunch of useful tools I use when I am making my floor plan or elevation drawings and it really helps speed things up in CAD. Um, so I'm going to introduce the trim tool. Type in trim. This allows you to, as you might guess, to trim a line with a cutting, another cutting line. So for example, say I have a wall I, I want to extend here, but I want to extend a wall from over here, make this a hallway. So extend this over here. Say I accidentally extend it over and I don't want to, I'm too lazy to select and then move it back. Maybe I don't have my O snap on. I can trim, I can type in trim and use this command. Um, so I'll use this as a cutting line and press enter and then I can just trim that right off. So I don't even have to move it. Now another really handy tool is hatching. I'm just gonna open another file for this. So I'm gonna open new file. 
So for example, if I'm drawing a floor plan, any, any random floor plan, say of uh, maybe a house, and I draw the interior perimeter of this floor plan. So I, wa I, wanna, I wanna use the tool offset to create a thickness for this shape. So what I do here is, if this is the interior perimeter of the house, I'll, I must have a wall thickness and that must be drawn in all your floor plans. So I'll type in the tool offset. I select my offset distance. So let's see, maybe I'll do 200. And from this, I select out. So that's, that would be my wall thickness. Maybe that's a bit much. I'll do a little bit less. So there we go. That, that's going to be my wall thickness. Um, that makes the whole process of making walls a lot quicker, especially when you're doing angles and curves. Um, after this, you might want to have your wall thicknesses hatched because if, if this is a floor plan, you're going to have to have cut in your floor plan. So uh, you type in the command hatch. You can change the, the different hatch patterns over here, say it might be wood, or uh, sometimes you can just leave it solid, press OK. You can pick your points, and then you add, press Enter, press OK, and then it'll automatically hatch this, this boundary. When you do lay down a hatch, it lays it down as all one piece, so if you create a bunch of separate objects and you want to hatch all of them. If you pick it under the same hatch, you're not going to be able to change them separately and it's going to be just one hole. So if you would like them to be separate hatches, just do them separately. Also, after you set down a hatch, you can edit it by using the command hatch edit. Select the hatch object and then I can change I can change, for example, the, uh, the swatch. I can remove other boundaries that I might not want. Press enter. OK. The next tool I'm going to be talking about is scale. Um, this is super handy because when you're going, when you're pulling floor plans from the internet, you might not always get them in a vectorized format. and just being able to use this tool to, okay, so when this happens and you can't zoom out any further, that means you have to regenerate your model. So you type in regen, there you go. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do is scale this floor plan in reference to a standard dimension. So for a door, a standard door width is about 900 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is use this point over here as a reference point, I'm gonna follow it and I'm gonna draw 900 millimeters. This is 900 millimeters in relation to the drawing. So the drawing is a little bit big and that means I have to scale it. So I type in the command scale. My base point is gonna be over here and then I wanna set a reference. So I'm gonna be using this line as a reference. So I select my base point, reference that, and I'm gonna shrink it down to the end of this line. And there you go. So now you successfully scaled a rasterized image and you can continue to draw the rest of this drawing. I'm going to go back to my other drawing and now I'm going to be talking about layers. The reason your layers, this is layer property, are so important is because it allows you to spread out all the different information in your drawing. So right here I have a furniture as a set piece and by having it in a different layer I can disable it and I just hide all of these and export this as a drawing or I can have it with the furniture layout. You can also do this with uh, different lighting or structural columns and just it allows it gives you greater control of what you can produce with one set of drawing. If you accidentally have drawn in a, a layer that you didn't want to but you spent all this time creating this complex shape then what you can do select it, and then you type in properties. Open up a property box for that line you selected, and you can change the color, whether it's by layer, or you can also change the layer of it. So now I'm gonna go into the final step of this 
tutorial and I'm going to talk about scaling your drawings in paper space and using line weights. Um, this is the sheet size that I have available right now. You can press Ctrl P and this opens up your plot style. So I want to be exporting this to a PDF file so I go to DWG to PDF and I'm looking at maybe a 11 by 17 sheet of paper. So press cancel, look at it. Uh, I want to open this window up so that I can't see this bounding box when I export it. And I double click to enter. This is a window into model space. So anything you do here will actually affect your drawing in model space. So make sure you don't delete anything. Um, and to actually scale it properly for this paper size, I go down here once I'm in this model space in the window and I click. So I look either I can scale to fit or I can scale one. Okay, hold on. It's, it's a fraction of, what, of the size what it should be. So what you do here is it's normally to do with uh, your plot style. And notice how uh, at the beginning of this tutorial, I showed you that I was using imperial units. One inch should not equal 25.4 drawing units. One inch should actually equal one. And just make sure your plot scale is correct. And sometimes you'll actually have this full window covered and you won't be able to double click out of it. So what do you do if you're stuck in model space and you won't be able to get back to resize this and frame it properly? So you just go down here, there's a little button, you change it to paper space, you zoom out, and then you can pull it down. And sometimes you also get lost in your model space. So what you do is type in Z, A, so it'll automatically pull in to uh, where your drawing is located. So that looks about right. I want to show you guys how to use plot style tables. These are really important because these are a quick way to, to actually implement line weights into your drawing. Notice how each one of these lines are in different layers. This allows me to represent each one of these layers as a different line thickness. You can do that in, in model space as well, but I prefer to do it in your plot style just because overall it's a lot quicker. And when you go into your plot style table, then you can adjust your CTP file. And what this actually does, if you go into edit, is it assigns a specific color or thickness and associates it with a color. So for example, color six is magenta and it's 0.325 millimeters. Um, as you progressively go down, you have lighter line weights, lighter and lighter line weights, all the way to 0.05 millimeters. That way, when you do set up your colors, you can make sure that there's a hierarchy of what each color represents on your drawing. Now these files I just got from my first year class and I'm assuming a lot of first years in my program have not gotten that because the course has actually been taking out for some reason this year. So I'm just going to link that in a Google Drive in the links down below. Um, yeah, so I have actually two different files that I got for this, um, RCID full and RCID half. Uh, so the half is actually used for smaller paper sizes like 11 by 17. If you're printing on something larger like a A1 size paper or A0 size paper, then you're going to want to use RCID full just because it scales up your line weights as well to make them a bit more legible on larger size paper. So now that I have this all set up, I apply to layout, I can preview before I go in. Line weights aren't exactly correct. This was a drawing from second year, so don't judge me on having bad line weights, please. All right, so that was my AutoCAD basics tutorial for interior design and architectural drawings. If you feel like it was missing anything, please feel free to share it in the comment section down below. And if you loved it, feel free to subscribe to this channel because that would help me out a lot. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video.